One of the interesting things about Islam is the tension that the ulama had with music. Nobody can make a blanket statement that it's mujma alayh. Uh, if you read Shawkani and Nail al Autar, he has a section on this and, and talks about the khilaf that existed about music. Imam al Ghazali, Abdul Ghani al Nabrusi, and other great scholars have sections about sama', uh, which is a sacred type of music uh, that they thought was a good thing and permissible. But the ulama were very wary of music because they understood how powerful music is and, and how seductive it is and the effects that it has on the soul. This actually goes back to the ancient Greeks who Plato in the Republic, Socrates uh, is the voice that he uses, but Plato in the Republic actually outlaws certain types of music in the Republic because they were so harmful to the soul. And, and ethos theory is the theory of the effect that music has. In, in fact, Al-Farabi, who wrote Kitab uh, Al-Musiqa Al-Kabir, the big book of music, which I have in my library, it's a huge book, very heavy. Uh, it's one of the earliest works, serious works, on the science of music. Al-Farabi was known for being able to make people laugh, cry, become sleepy or become excited based on maqams that he would play on the oud. He could literally make people cry. And this is uh, well recorded. And this is what you find when people go to, to concerts. They get very agitated. They have to move. They don't know why, but they have to move. They can't stop moving because the music is having an effect on them. There's demonic effects that sounds have, and then there's angelic effects that sounds have. And so the ulama were very concerned about the demonic effects of sound. And they understood that one of the things that the demons have always used is music to lure people away. In fact, in the hadith about Dawood who sang the Psalms, he had a beautiful voice and he sang, which is musical, but it was angelic. Shaitan got a little band together and he put it on the side of the road and the people on their way to hear Dawood would stop and listen to the band of Shaitan and they would forget about Dawood. And so this was the tension that the ulama had and it's very important that that tension exists because nobody can make a blanket statement that music is entirely haram and nobody can make a blanket statement that it's halal. And so that tension is there so that Muslims never go too far into that thing. Because now you see in the West, people listen to music all the time. They have no, they're always plugged in. They get in their car, they turn on the music. They, they walk, they put in their, their earphones and they listen to their music. And people have long playlists. They spend a lot of money on these things. And so they're lost. They don't have free time to think anymore because their lives are filled with sound. So the demons have immense tools that they've never had before. And they're using them very effectively. And we're, unfortunately, the people of Haq are not using them effectively at all. And Allah says, Aqibu bi mithli ma uqibtum bi. Fight with the tools that you're being fought with. The jihad of this age is between the ears. The jihad of this age is between the ears. Because this is the battlefield is the mind of human beings and by that by extension the heart